All right. Buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, I want to play a little clip here from Chuck Misler. All right, let's just hear what he says. There's some that we'll encounter today that most people miss, but uh, be that as it may. Uh, this final section that we're in, 17, 18, was, of course, the Mystery Babylon, which we dealt with. Chapter 19 was the return of Jesus Christ that we took last time. And tonight we're in the millennium and will be followed by the final two chapters of the book on the eternity and the conclusion to the book. But the last time we took the return of the king, the, the second coming of Jesus Christ. You know, it, as we get into eschatology, of course, it's important to realize that the first branch in the road, if you will, the first Y in the road, the first division, is someone either takes the millennium seriously, and that's what we're going to be taking on tonight, or they don't. It may shock you to realize that most churches, of the major denominations at least, are amillennial. They do not believe in a literal millennium. The word mo All right. Uh, so let's... Let's take a look. Let's examine that statement right there. All right, that statement right there where he says most churches are amillennial. Amillennial. Um, I can't see the word. Most churches of the major denominations are amillennial. All millennial. All right, so, and that, that right there, uh, it's not true. Uh, maybe it was true 30 years ago. I don't know. You know, I've only been a Christian for almost 23 years. Not even 23 years. So 30 years ago, maybe. Um... And I think, I do believe this was probably 30 years ago. Missler died in 2018. It's about six years ago. Alright, so in the 90s he would have been 60. Um, it would be interesting if that's actually true. But it's definitely not true today um, for example Revela if you do a, a word search for Revelation 20 you just get millennium millennium and they're all teaching this idea that there's going to be an extended thousand year period after the return of our Lord Jesus Christ in other words Jesus lied when he said it's going to be the end of the world when he comes in the clouds of heaven. And, and Peter lied, and, and really the, the book of uh, Genesis is a lie. And the, you go all the way through to the book of Revelation, it's all lies. And when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's not the end of the world. There's a bonus thousand years, all right? And the reason they teach this is because they put their hope in their fantasies into this idea of a thousand year period where they're going to be having dirty stinky sex now let's be honest about that All right. and, but it's interesting also because that's the, what the Bible warns us of that this will happen in the last days 2nd Peter chapter 3 knowing this first I mean, if you don't believe the Bible, that's on you, right? But it's happening now, and it's rather obvious. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lust. All right, and just in case that's not enough for you, it's also in Jude, all right, in verse 18, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time, 
who should walk after their own ungodly lust. Uh, maybe 30 years ago, things were different. <laughs> I mean, I, I say that. Obviously, things were a lot different 30 years ago. Of course, people that are 30 years and younger, they, they just think that, well, the things are just happening like they they always have, right? Things just continue as they were from the beginning of creation, right? They don't understand the change that this world has gone through. And they don't see the increasing corruption, wickedness of this world. Um, I, I mean, I gotta I gotta concede that possibility that it's worse, it's increasingly worse today than it was 30 years ago. Of course, 30 years ago, I don't know. I don't know because I was not a believer 30 years ago. My eyes were not open. They're open now and I see it. I can see it. I can see the wizards behind the curtains. They're not fooling me. Alright, so maybe 30 years ago um, that was the case where let's see let's I want to show some examples here all, right, all these guys I mean you just go right on down the line every single one of them and this is not just today or yesterday and the day before this is going on for a long long time alright and so the question I have for all these people do you believe there will be sex after Jesus comes right because that's really what it, their whole the whole basis of what they teach and I you know I really quite frankly I don't know that they even realize that they're mocking the Word of God all they're doing is echoing what a what another man taught them and they're ignoring willingly ignoring the scripture. All right, go to Millennial Reign. And look, these YouTube searches, they're representative of what is going on in the churches today. The Millennial Messiah. Right? By Elder Bruce. Right? Why would you call yourself Elder unless you were unless you were a Mormon, right? The Millennial Reign, Brother Yemi. The Millennial Millennial Reign, Sunday School, look at these. Oh, it's all around the world. Look at these guys. And it's quite interesting because there is no Millennial Reign taught in the Bible at all. Not in Revelation 20, not anywhere. It's incredible. But they're putting their hope into this thousand years, thousand year reign of sex is what it really boils down to Jesus doesn't reign a thousand years he reigns forever the Bible's quite clear on that yeah so what do you imply that Jesus will only reign a thousand years what is it man now that's something that they won't talk about it's rather remarkable it really is alright so this is ridiculous now let's go to all millennialism which Chuck Missler said 30 years ago this was the majority of the teachers in the church and you'll notice a pattern here Cat, let me read these here captivating content on apologetics that is both educational and that's a sponsored ad alright whatever Daniel's prophetic dream exposes flaws in Doug Wilson's post-millennialism, of course, the trick is this guy's going to be teaching premillennialism. Why would you preach against post-millennialism unless you're preaching premillennialism? And then they'll talk about post-millennialism, premillennialism, and then anytime you bring up amillennialism, it's going to be a straw man argument against it 
they don't even believe it and they don't understand it and you got all millennial primitive so you can't talk about one because you don't know what the truth is right you have no idea what the truth is so you just give your ideas your theories on what three beliefs are you don't know the truth at all it's interesting why not just say hey this is the truth why do you gotta say well some people believe this and some people believe that and then there's another group that believes this why you don't know what the truth is no, the truth don't matter to you is that what it is Lutheran amillennialism and the Antichrist okay so I I've not really studied up on Luther I've read a couple things where he was all millennial and an anti-pope and just from that alone it sounds like he got it right but that's not being taught at all today now what what is up with these sponsored ads I didn't sponsor him pray now what does that mean give me money give you give you money or give me money I don't know what that means okay the false doctrine of there we go see the false doctrine of all millennialism and I'm not even <clears throat> I'm not even gonna say I am all millennialist because I am not I'm just a lowly Christian and I believe what the Bible says whatever your views of all millennialism is that's on you right I'm not putting a label on I'm not putting that label on the Bible the Bible says when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven <clears throat> excuse me when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it's the end of the world and there's when that happens there's no more sex after that it's judgment day it's the great and terrible day of the Lord it's prophesied from Genesis to Revelation. Therefore, when you read Revelation 20, you got to understand the rest of the Bible. Revelation 20 does not contradict the entire Bible. It's consistent from Genesis to Revelation. At the end of the thousand years, it's the end of the world. The first resurrection is Jesus Christ. You can't figure that out. Jesus himself says, I am the resurrection. Yet you can't figure that out. 1 Corinthians 15 says, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Right there. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive, but every man in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ that is coming, then comes in. You can't figure it out. You can't figure it out. And there's something wrong with people. And this is not a one time standalone verse here, neither is Revelation 20. Right? I mean. It almost seems like people aren't reading their Bible at all. They're just echoing what other men have told them. The rest of the, of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished. This is the first resurrection. Well, what's the first resurrection? Well, you, you never read the Bible? You don't know about Jesus Christ who laid down his life? and then took it back up and ascended to heaven with the promise that he will return for us you don't know that Jesus said in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again to receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also you don't know about that I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also for as in Adam all died and so in 
Christ shall all be made alive, but every man in his own order. Christ, the first roots, he has went up to heaven, prepared. He's prepared a place for us, and he will return. Afterward, they that are Christ that is coming. Afterward, they that are Christ that is coming. That's when we will be resurrected. See, Christ is the first resurrected. Huh? Blessed and holy is he that has part. See, we are partakers of his resurrection. Right now. Right now. You think about what it says in John chapter 11 when Jesus says, Um, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Right? Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. The second death has no power over us that are born of God. Right? He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. The second death has no power. Over us. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such that the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him. We reign with Christ right now. But you couldn't figure that out. Did you read chapter 1? Revelation chapter 1? Or did you read anything at all in the Bible? And has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. I mean, <laughs> the first begotten of the dead. And has made us kings and priests. We are priests of God right now. I just wonder, anybody reading the Bible anymore? Uh... I don't doubt people are reading the Bible, but do, do they believe what the Bible says? Exodus 19, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. I mean, this is not a new concept, or this is not a concept of, hey, this only happens after he returns. We're only going to be kings and priests unto God, or we're only going to be priests of God after he returns. I mean, that's not in the Bible at all and this is Exodus 19 ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation well, you guys never read that what's going on man you just everybody if it's not on TikTok and if it's longer than 30 seconds people don't care about it that's what I think I, how else do you explain it Really? First Peter chapter 2, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. You, you're saying, oh, we're, we're not kings right now. We're not, or I'm sorry, we're not priests of God right now. You're called to preach the gospel to every creature. But yet you're not a priest? You don't reign with Christ right now? If you don't reign with Christ right now, how can you say you're saved? Uh, how can you rightly say that you're saved if you're not reigning with him right now? That's odd. And even stranger, in my opinion, is this idea, well, hey, there's going to be a thousand years after Jesus returns, and then he's going to be on the earth, and so will the city of God be on the earth for a thousand years. He's going to be I don't know, what is he, in a spaceship, or on a mountain, or in a building, or what, in Rome, or whatever, whatever it is, that let's talk about it, okay, just, just talk about it, okay, imagine the scenario, Jesus Christ is on the earth, and he's ruling, he's got a rod in his hand, and he's reigning and ruling 
for this thousand years and the thousand years of peace, I guess. They're going to be sex, people having children, all that stuff. For a thousand years on the earth. And then fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours him and you and everybody else. Everybody on the earth. Everybody on the earth. I mean, it's not just, you know, whatever it is that you're thinking. Second Peter chapter 3. Oh, where are we at here? Yeah, no. See that? Heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and elements shall melt with fervent heat in the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. What's this here in verse 7? The heavens and the earth, which are now by the same order kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Revelation 20, if fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. It's the same event. You know, God destroyed the world by water in the days of Noah. And he will destroy the world again by fire. Right? What, is, what do you think? It's going to happen twice? God's going to destroy the world by fire when he comes in the clouds of heaven, and then he's going to destroy the fire again a thousand, destroy the world by fire again a thousand years later? Anybody putting any thought into this at all? Anybody? Is there anybody out there? Is there anybody out there? Really? Anybody got their eyes open? Huh? Anybody paying attention? Anybody paying attention? When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. And uh, I think once, if somebody, if there was anybody out there that understood that, they would understand why I am encouraging these deceivers to talk about having children after the return of Jesus. All right. Because this is completely contrary to what the scripture tells us. Alright, let me show you first John chapter two, the world passes away in the lust thereof, second Peter chapter three. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Alright, so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. Just like what we read in Matthew twenty four, Mark thirteen, Luke twenty one. And then, of course, Second Peter chapter 3, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. They're teaching this idea that there will be sex after the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world and the world passes away and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever